can't believe it's taken us this long to make a tapas tour video in Cadiz. This historic city is up there as one of my favorites for eating in Spain. Fresh seafood, unique local dishes, tapas bars full of history, and all served up by generous, life-loving gaditanos. In this video, we're gonna hit eight spots that you need to try when you're here. And we're gonna do all of this eating over the next 48 hours, taking into account the rhythms of a baby, of a family. So here you have the world's first 48 hour family tapas crawl. Now that's niche. Very niche. Venga, let's go. There's a famous place for fried fish here in Cadiz called Freiduri Freid joder. Freiduria, did I say that right? Las Flores. And that's where we normally go. And it's in this beautiful square with all these flowers. But Jose, who you will meet later on in this video, uh, who runs a great wine bar, said he prefers this place. Sí, cuarto cazón de adobo, cuarto choco, cuarto puntito. ¿Te parece típico? Sí. Yoli's sitting backed by virgins. And the menu is always organized in weight. So you can get a quarter kilo, un cuarto, half kilo, or a kilo of each dish. Warning for Americans, you know, no pounds here. You have to, to get, your, get your app out. Uh, cheers. From all the things on this menu, we've picked what we think are the three most sort of typical here in, here in Cadiz. I'm getting lemon juice in my eyes and my face all over the place. We've got cathon, which is a kind of a shark, a sand shark that's, in, that's been marinated in spices and then fried. We've got choco, which is like squid. And then we've got puntillitas, which are like little baby cuttlefish. This is a very hard lemon to squeeze. I'm having to flex my, my gym biceps. And so fried fish has always been so important in this part of Spain because, you know, the bay, the Bay of Cadiz is right there. It's where a lot of the fish is brought in from. And frying it goes right back to the Phoenicians, I have read. Probably on Wikipedia, probably not true, but I think it might be true. What should I try first? Chocos, I love these guys. Mm. With a bit of lemon on them, they're just kind of, I mean, you know, it's not gourmet, it's just like that kind of slightly light, squiddy flavor. A little bit of lemon, perfect battering, perfect amount of salt. Yum, delicious. Can I eat them? No. This is, this is for the people, Yoli. This is, just, these are props, you know? Marinated. Shark. <laughs> mm. Mm. Hang on. Perfect balance of vinegar, cumin. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Virgin. Praise me. <laughs> All right, I'm trying the cathon. I can't watch you eat cathon and not try it. Mm. Oh, when cathon is good, it is so good. This, you know, sometimes it can be dry. This is moist. It's juicy. Puntitas. Little baby cuttlefish. Crunchy and meaty. They're like little morsels from the sea. We need to now eat all of this, Yoli. I don't want to make Jose look bad. And guys, if you ever come here, just say Jose sent me. It seems to work. I thought the fish was very good there. I thought our performance was very weak. Oh no, really? Let's see if over the course of this video, yeah. we can... We get there. We get there. We, we get can... to, the, to the James and Phil level. Yeah. Well, James and Yoli level of old. You know, we get back our <laughs> mojo. This video is not about eating in car. This is about getting our mojo back. <laughs> when you're here, don't miss the market. Go to marvel at the incredible selection of fish and seafood and make sure to eat and drink the market fresh food at the surrounding stalls. Cheers. Especially the sushi. Yes, the sushi. So while the fried fish is kind of, you know, the typical way to try fish here, this is the way to try just, you know, the, the famous tuna from Cadiz in its most pure way. The tuna from these waters that they buy from the fishmongers every morning. And in fact, Rick Stein, famous Rick Stein, said that the tuna here in Gadi Sushi, in this place, beats the tuna in uh, the Tokyo market. So, and Rick no. knows, right? Yeah. No, did you did you know that, Yoli? I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> so what do we got, Yoli? Uh, the tuna loin here. Yeah. And then we have a uh, tuna belly, ventresca. I'm not going to put soy sauce, it's just pure tuna from Gadi. This is for you, Rick. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's almost like it's so clean, the flavor. It's just like you can taste the sea, but not in that kind of intense sea way. Very fresh. You do get a little bit of that kind of like a awfully sort of thing, right? The loin is a little more intense. The, the belly yeah. is, is kind of cleaner. Oh, something happened. Wasabi. Wasabi, wasabi attack. Wasabi attack. 
<laughs> and on our way out, we spot a somewhat unorthodox stall selling plates of Cadiz oysters and sea urchin. I think I'm gonna go for the. I mean, I know oysters, but I don't know erizo. I've never had erizo in my life. Oyster is a is a more subtle flavor, oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. you should probably start. That would just be my. I, I'm you know who am I here? But you know, Rick's. I'm not Rick Stein. I'm gonna go for the erizo first. <laughs> ah, Yelly brings conflict. Ah, uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, ooh, buya, buya kasha, buya kasha. You know, like sea anemones. You know, it's like biking into the sea, only saltier and um, it's like as if there was like a tomato sauce in there. How about that? Oysters from Cali. I've never had oysters from Cali before. Mm. Really good. Yeah. Like a great oyster. Mm. Yum. I'm a little scared of this one now because of what you said. Wait. Watch out! You don't get a nail in your mouth. <laughs> Straight to Cadiz okay. Hospital. Oh wow. Yeah. That is not what okay. I was expecting. I've had erizo before, but it doesn't taste like any erizo I've ever had. I don't know if I like it. Well, it's just, it's not fishy. I'm confused, I'm lost. I'm a child in the wilderness of sea urchin. It's like fishy, but with ketchup. Yeah. <laughs> Come here, try this, and leave a comment if that's what sea urchin tastes like. Hello. Cayo con garbanzo. Esto es la arbondillita en tomate. Arbondiga. Los garbanchitos con langostino. Patatas con chonco. La carne al toro. Garbanzo con langostino. Está del carajo. Sí, está muy rico. Come, por favor. Okay, so it was Lucia's nap time, so I'm on my own, my own with these two dishes. I was only actually going to get one dish here, the ortiguillas, but I saw these stews on display and it's like, got to get in there. Because when we talk about Andalusian food, there's kind of two types. They talk about guisos y fritos, which means stews and fried things. Now we've got the fried things here, but the stews, I didn't have that plan to try some stews, but I saw those. It's like, we've got to try it. And this one is super typical that I've chosen, papas y chocos, which means squid and potatoes. Oh, wow. That is like a seafood stew to perfection. Intense seafood flavor, the choco, but the potatoes are like sponges and they've soaked up all the, all the juice. And what I love about this place is it's super barrio. It's totally local. This guy just came in, uh, a client, you know, he knew him, the owner knew him by the first name, and the client just started taking the lids off the stew, kind of, you know, seeing what there is for today. This is for you, Phil. I know you love these. And that is okay. really quite weird. Yeah. <laughs> but to be honest, when we had them in Madrid at San Lucar, they're really good there. But I have a feeling that you haven't had ortiguillas, you haven't had fried sea anemones until you've had them in Cadiz. These little balls of, of the ocean. Balls of the ocean, that is such a... That, anyway, let me eat it. Oh wow. Yes, that is an ortiguilla. Crunchy on the outside, hot perfectly gooey in the inside, like a mouthful of ocean, like the waves just washed over your face. Okay, so Casa Pepe is an awesome find, a, a perfect little neighborhood bar. I'm gonna head back to Yoli and Lucia. We're gonna continue eating tomorrow. Okay, Yoli, it's day two of this epic tapas crawl. How did you sleep? Yeah, I had a good interval of closing my eyes for like two hours. <laughs> so what we have is a little free tapa, which is not a common thing, I, I feel like in Cadiz. Patatas aliñas. Mm. Oh my God. Patatas aliñas are a dish here in Cadiz that are one of my favorite things in the world. The Irishman and me. Potatoes that have been soaked in olive oil, vinegar, there's onion in there, probably some garlic. It's sharp, it's like the best potato salad of your life. One thing I have to say about the people of Cadiz is that part of the experience of Cadiz is the people of Cadiz. These are just, they're so friendly, they're so open, they're so proud, you know, when we come in and we say, you know, sometimes a bit nervous when you go into a bar and you got a camera. They're like, oh my God, this is amazing. And they're like, I didn't put my makeup on. There's no reticence, you know? And that's what I love about them. What I eat, what I eat. Hey. You know. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. Yum, 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 yum. Look at that smoke coming out. Lucia is kind of like, wow, I can't believe this. Hold your horses, Yoli. They want to burn your lips. Yeah, I know yeah, this no, is your no, favorite. No. It's very tempting. I'm like, ah. 
<laughs> so while we twiddle our thumbs and wait for the gun to cool down, um, I think a lot of people watching this video might be curious, if you're traveling as a family, can you go into tapas bars? And yeah, you can. These are family places. When Yoli left yesterday with Lucia, the last place we were at, just after you, two other families with babies and strollers left, like nap time. These are not like drinking places. They're eating, they're, you know, the restaurants. So you're all good. I can't wait anymore. Wow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow a little bit on them. El Abuelo in Madrid. Be careful. Be careful. These are very good. The El Abuelo in Madrid, famous place for Gamas Alajillo, is on notice it appears. I haven't tried them yet. Going in, willing to burn my lips, my chops. <laughs> Fresh, tender, perfect. Marcado! The system, it's so Spanish. There's a guy whose job is just to run out of the kitchen saying, Mesa dos, and he says like, Mesa uno, like table one. And then he hands it to the other one. There he goes. Presa <laughs> Iberica, this big cut right here. The juicy Iberian grilled. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yoli. La la la. Ooh. Perfectly cooked, fresh, beautiful, delightful. Mmm, casalazo. Yes, you guys are gonna love this. Uy, A full quarter artichoke grilled with a big slice of jamón on the top. Jamón ibérico as well. I've never quite seen it done this beautifully, simply, and deliciously. Oh yeah. Perfectly grilled artichoke, delicious jamón. Slightly vinegary as well. It's like vinegar on here, maybe like a sherry vinegar. And like they're tender, you know how like artichokes are hard to get this tender, I think. Hasta luego. Una buena recomendación de Jose. True amazing tapas bars. Run by great people, attract great clients, friendly people around you, great food. Casalazo, guys. to say Jose seen you here at Casa Manteca because I don't think it would have any effect. I mean, this place is famous. Kind of everybody knows about it, but for good reason. It Probably is... the most famous place in Cadiz. Yeah, right? Yeah. Opened in the, the 50s. The cathedral and this. <laughs> I think, isn't this the cathedral? This is the cathedral to a certain dish. But yeah. opened in the 50s, a guy called Pepe, uh, kind of an ex-bullfighter, never quite made it uh, to be super famous as a bullfighter. Opened this place, just has been going ever since, and the decoration is amazing. So, a little awkward to film because I have a very wide lens. They've said, like, just be a bit careful about filming people for people's privacy. So often I've got people's privacy on one side of the lens and on camera, and I've got Yoli breastfeeding on the other side. So <laughs> I can't swing the camera. What's in many, wrong with that? <laughs> can't swing the camera in many directions, but we're gonna do it. So there's a tapas bar that is famous for this classic dish in, in Cadiz called the tortita de camarones. It's not here. It's a place we are gonna go to, but we've had it here, and it's also delicious here. So Yoli, you're gonna taste it. It's a big tortita. Oh. You're just happy to see me. <laughs> This little baby shrimp um, with egg and flour and you just kind of batter it and fry it all together and this marvel, marvelous thing happens. You know these are good when it's just literally all shrimp and not a lot of batter. I'm gonna stop talking to you. Oh my god, it's really good. I can't touch the camera now, I have oily hands. I have to strap the camera to Yoli's head. <laughs> GoPro it. Here is the key dish. This is what you came here for. Totally unique. Chicharrones especiales, which are a sort of smoked stewed pork that have been spiced as well, are served on these little, it's not a paper plate, these little slices of paper, which is a very traditional way to show when you would buy these in the in the charcuteria. So papelon. That's what, papelon, that's what it's called. Thank you, Yoli. And with a little lemon on it, salt. Ooh, yes. You came here for this. They are so good. Ay, chicharrones, my love. To me it's always like a mystery. It's like meat, but it's so fresh, you know, with a lemon in there. You know, there's slightly smoke in there as well. Wow. Mm, <laughs> okay, day three. Yes, this eating extravaganza has become a 72-hour affair. Yoli and Lucia are back at the hotel, and I'm taking you to meet Jose, our hookup here for great bars in Cadiz. And I'm also gonna show you my favorite bar in Cadiz, and perhaps one of my favorite bars in all of the world.
So of all my happy places in all the world, this is right up there, Taberna La Manzanilla. It's run by Jose for the last 30 years, run by his father before him, run by his grandfather before him. They only serve sherry here. You can't get beer, wine, coffee, and a few simple delicious tapas. And all the sherry comes from these barrels. These barrels, you can see, are over 200 years old. So the mind-bending thing about sherry is that it's not a wine where you're drinking a specific year. It's always a blend of vintages that go back decades and potentially centuries. And so these barrels that are behind us have never been emptied in the 90 years that this uh, this bodega, that this uh, bar, this tavern has been running. And so Jose, his father before him, his grandfather before him, always adding and topping up uh, the sherry that's in there. There's traces in here of a wine that's over a hundred years old. So how does it taste? Wow. It's intense, it's rich. There's dried nuts, you know, dried fruits, but there's acidity as well from the salinity of San Lucar, where this, this wine comes from. And having earned a little trust with Jose, he gives me access to his magical little storage closet at the back of the bar. I remember the first time Jose took me back here some years ago. I was having a drink and wow, it's like walking through the, I don't know, through the looking glass or through the wardrobe into Narnia, you know, Sherry Narnia. It's a little museum of objects from the past, you know, bottles of sherry from the mid 20th century. God knows what else, barrels that are 100 years old. Oh, you can smell the humidity. It's awesome. And while there is so much history in this tavern, the actual oldest part is the ceiling up here, 250 odd years old. But what is really fascinating is that this wood comes from the Americas. This is wood that was used as ballast in the galleons that were coming back from the New World with goods. And then once they got it here, they were like, well, we better keep using it. So they used it to, to build this building. I also decide to grab a bottle of Amontillado for Paco, who runs the restaurant Isamar in my barrio and is a big wine connoisseur. El Faro. So this place has been open since the 60s. It's a classic place for great seafood here in, uh, in Cadiz. I've been here a few times over the years, always in the bar. I prefer the bar. It's kind of my vibe versus the restaurant. So you know now that tuna is really important in Cadiz, but Almadraba tuna is a I'm whole different kettle of fish. Uh-oh. What happened? Uh-oh. <laughs> Hang on, I was going to eat all the food. Ah, uh, well, you, you didn't say you. Share. I didn't know when you were coming. You know, Yoli just kind of comes in, bowls in. I'm trying to teach here about Alma And I just an arrive and it's Ancient little... Phoenician fishing nah, nah, technique. Nah, nah. Give me some, give me some. Food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the fun arrives. All right, <laughs> let me serve you some food. Do I get a kiss? Do I get a kiss? Alma de la Tuna, shorthand. Ancient Phoenician fishing technique, still in use today in Cadiz to catch tuna, can only be fished in this way using these nets and a whole process. You guys have wonderful colors going on. I know. Love Alma de la <laughs> you love Phoenician oh, fishing techniques. Oh yeah, you know me. You know, I'm all about Phoenician fishing techniques. <laughs> Delicious, tender, perfectly raw, perfectly raw. I'm getting destabilized by Yoli. Ajo blanco, which is like ground almonds and garlic to create this white paste. Olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. This is really yummy. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yes. It becomes better and better yeah. with every bite. Yeah. Wow. Yoli, so we had the tortita camarones in Casa Manteca. Yeah. But here is the place that's famous for it, right? Wow. It's a smackdown. Oh, tortita camarones. Let's see who wins. Smackdown. You see this one? You can see all the, the eyes. little shrimps, the eyes, yeah. This is good. I think this might be slightly better. It's a little less oily. Mm. Now you see it, Dilo Lucia? <laughs> it has just the, the perfect flavor. Yeah, less, less kind of egg, less flour in there. Okay, after all the confusion around the sea urchin in the market, the erizo, 
the flavors in the market were a little muddy. This is a little cleaner, I would say. Yeah. Similar, uh -huh. but a little more CE. I wonder what the flavor was in the other one. Dirt of Pollution. the sea. Dirt of the sea. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's all the other stuff going on as well. The foam and, you know, God knows what. <laughs> but it's very delicious. I'd recommend this one over the one on the market, but uh -huh. I'm probably a Philistine and the one on the market was great and I'm an idiot. Let's go to the next stop because it's starting to rain. Weather's coming in. My ancestors were whalers, so I can feel the, uh, the weather coming in off the Atlantic. Ah, uh, there you do. Woo! I think it's ah. Beautiful day in Cadiz. We're gonna head out to a little place we know on the beach. Cause hey, this weather screams beach. The weather is coming in, seriously. Looks like the bus is not working. We can't get a taxi with Lufia. This is not quite the grand fin finale I was planning uh, for this video. When we came, we're in the new part of Cadiz right now. When we were here last time, four months ago, it was a beautiful day. We ate out on a terrace on the beach and everything. Now we're in the middle of a storm. Good food will resolve everything, I'm sure. You all right? I know we've taken you to a lot of traditional places, so we wanted to take you to a place in the new city, on the beautiful beach here, and with modern food. And you know what, Yoli, after that adventure, I am ready to push the boat out on this meal, right? How do you feel about that? Permission? Do we give each other permission to push the boat out? Permission granted, but hopefully the boat won't sink in yeah. the storm. <laughs> it's pretty intense out there. One thing I would love is uh, to have better mocktails in Spain uh, because they're usually missing the alcohol. <laughs> Pluma Ibérica a la Brasa. These guys do a lot of things on charcoal. With like a bit of truffle in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. they're from the chips. By ah, the way. Truffle fries. First time I've had truffle fries in Spain. There you go. Mm. Ah, that's a great piece of meat. Don't order the bogavante, the lobster, al ajillo here if you only have one arm because you're filming yourself or you're holding a baby as well. It is really hard to eat. I would just, even if you had two arms, I would skip that dish, it's complicated. This is a great place, lots of yummy food. Skip the complicated bogavante. Tapas crawls with uh, family. You need a lot of time, you need a lot of planning, and you need to make sure that you check the weather constantly. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're traveling elsewhere in Andalusia on this trip, check out the video playlist I've put down there with other videos for Seville, Cordoba, eating, drinking, enjoy. We'll see you over there in a moment. Hasta luego. Ciao.